It's time for the first step on our journey to bake a sourdough loaf gluten-free. So the first thing we're going to want to do is replenish and reactivate our starter so that it's prepared for making our leaven. So if your starter is currently on the counter, leave it on the counter. And if it's in the refrigerator, take it out. And we're going to feed our starter the same way either way. So let's go ahead and take a look at our starters. So here is our sorghum starter. And now we're going to look at, in comparison to when it had its beautiful domed pillowy effect earlier today, you could see that it was like that analogy I gave of the hot air balloon. When the hot air balloon has the air in it, it still has those pillow, that pillowy look. So it's got a little bit of ridges and valleys, but they're not deep. It's just like a pillow, like nice and soft, like a pillow. And that's because that carbon dioxide is being released by the microorganisms and pushing it up and making it all nice and poofy. And you get that nice domed effect. Here you can see there's no longer a dome. You can see where it has risen to and fallen down. And you can see that from the side as well. You can see its consistency and you can see all those ridges and valleys. There are very deep ridges and valleys. So this is definitely considered now an old starter. Now, most of the bacteria and yeast are at the end of their life cycle and they're starting to die off. So it needs to be fed. So let's go ahead and feed our starter. So tonight we're going to feed our starter in preparation to actually make our leaven tomorrow. So what we need to do is feed our starter in a ratio that's going to allow us to have a very low base acidity. So this is what we learned from the talk with Hendrik from the bread code. We learned about how having our starter have a lower base acidity would help improve our ability to get a rise out of our dough so that we have a larger window in which we can ferment our dough and we don't have to be perfect. So we're going to feed our starter in a ratio of one to five to five, starter to flour to water. And in that way, it never gets a chance to get acidic. So we're going to discard all but 20 grams of our starter and feed it 100 grams of flour and 100 grams of water. And in this way, it's similar to what we did when I traveled home from my family's cottage. We fed a double feed. So it may take quite some time before our starter is actually ready to be made into the leaven. However, our starter has had some time since then and the colony has had some time to become established. So it may take a little less time than we think, but most likely we won't be mixing our leaven until later in the day. We will just keep an eye on our starter and try and create our leaven when our starter is at its peak activity. However, you don't have to worry about trying to find the exact peak activity or whether or not it's going to peak during the night or while you're at work or something like that. Because if it has already peaked and fallen, all you have to do is give it a small snack and it will be back to its peak within the hour. So we will talk about this tomorrow morning as we won't be feeding our starters. I'll do a quick talk on exactly what to do and I'm going to show you how we're going to be taking care of our starter once they go into the refrigerator. But for tonight, make sure to leave your starter at room temperature like we always have been. And I'm going to show you all of that tomorrow when we make our leaven, we will take some of it out and we will feed our starter to be putting it into the refrigerator. So not to worry about the details now, we will deal with all of that tomorrow. So place your starter in a snuggly spot and I will see you in the morning. I hope you have a wonderful, deep, peaceful sleep. Good night.